let's spend a bit of time today reviewing the admin console in Twigate because it serves as the source of truth for our customers. Let's start with settings. Settings will contain general information on the tenants you have, uh, along with the admin console security, which informs what uh, Twingate administrators will have to go through in order to get access to the console itself. This says nothing about other users. This is purely for admin console security access. It'll summarize your billing as well. It'll cover the integration to your identity provider, which is likely where you will start when you first implement Twingate. The identity provider can be one of many. Here we use Okta. It use it. It allows us to sync groups and users from the identity provider to Twingate, and you can set up the integration here. It'll also allow you to generate some uh, reports and analytics on network events and on admin actions taken in this very console, along with the management of API tokens. Now, apart from the settings, let's cover other topics. Let's start with users. Users represent the end users that will be connecting to protected resources via Twingate. When you use an identity provider, those users will be populated by the identity provider that you can see referenced all the way to the right. You also have a concept of groups, which is nothing more than groups of end users. Those groups can also be synced with the identity provider or created in Twingate directly. Now, users will connect to Twingate using devices. So if we head over to the devices section of the admin console, you will see a mix of all devices with some level of information, including the user, operating system version, a version of the client, and so on. And it will give you the ability to simply mark existing devices as trusted, or not trusted. Now, when a user uses a device to connect to something, that something happens to be resources. So resources will be visible under the network tab. A resource represents an asset or a class of assets that you wish to protect behind twin gates. Those resources are, if we click on any one of them, assigned to groups. So groups of users have access to resources and resources are made available via remote networks. We'll see what that means in a minute. Now, if we click on remote networks, which will be available here and available under network as well. Let's take an example of this one. A remote network has a collection of resources assigned to it. And a remote network is nothing more than a collection of connectors. A connector is a jumping point into a resource from an end user's perspective. So when an end user connects to say this IP address, their client will connect to a connector, one of two that is here. The connector on the customer side will then ensure the communication to the destination and from the destination back to the client. So in short, a remote network, such as this one, can have one to many connectors. We advise having at least two connectors per remote network because by default, they will provide high availability and load balancing without any configuration required. So if we summarize what we've seen so far, users belong to groups. Groups are assigned permissions on resources. And those resources are accessible via a set of connectors represented by a remote network. Now, this should answer the question as to how a given end user will end up reaching a assets, a private resource. But what it doesn't do is answer the question on what needs to be true about the device, how the end user needs to authenticate in order to gain access to the resource, and uh, how often should they authenticate as well. 
those three questions are actually answered by the concept of policies. So if we take a look back to one of our resources here, you will see that, uh, let's say this group is protected here, the list of resources under here, Twingate Demo SSH. This is protected by this resource policy. So the concept of policies, which is also available under the policies tab, answers all three questions we mentioned before. A policy answers the question, how often should a user with valid access authenticate? In this case, it is once every day. What should be true about the device? We'll get to that in a minute. And how should they authenticate? In this case, we're requiring two-factor authentication to gain access to the end user, to the resource, to the protected resource associated. In this case, we require two-factor authentication for access to the private resource exposed. Now, the very final question around policies is what must be true of the device for the device to be able to connect to the resource? And this is defined with trusted profiles in Twin Gates. This is accessible via devices and under security here. We will do a review of the content of all those tabs in a subsequent video.